in. And we will just start in just one minute. Um, thank you so much to those who are joining early. Sorry to have to wait. But in the meantime, maybe you can have a little bit of uh, of like uh, breathe and sit down, sit back and relax, uh, like and like we about, are doing. <laughs> and think about JD security. <laughs> and think about that. How much you're gonna learn here? Yes. So I think that, yeah, I think that we can start. Yeah, um, I think so. so. One minute past. Yeah. So hi all, welcome to this webinar in which we will speak about three different keys to reduce your audit efforts. First of all, I would like to comment about these webinar guidelines. The duration will be more or less of 45 minutes. So please, your, uh, please raise your hand if you can see my screen and you can hear. Monica, could Everything, you check? everything yeah. looks good, yes. Okay, okay, yeah. good. So we would like to interact with you. So in case you have questions during this webinar, please address them on the chat. At the end of the session, we will try to answer them. And please enjoy. So that's me. I am really happy to have you all here. I would like to introduce myself. I am Agustina Calelo. I am based in Barcelona, Spain. I have been working as a JD consultant for 10 years, four of them in Celtics. As a JD consultant, I am specialized in finance and in the last years also in JD security, working for different projects, doing support, and also getting to know all our tools. For those that are not familiar with Celtics, we are a consultancy company expert in ERPs as JD Edwards, NextWorld, NetSuite and Sage. We are more of 170 consultants. Um, we are present in nine countries from Europe, South Africa and Asia Pacific. We provide services like implementations of ERPs, upgrades and rollouts. We also maintain different statistics products and provide functional and technical support as well as automatic monitorization. And we are also proud to be good partners of all out. So that's why we have our special guest today, Monica Otero from All Out, to do this webinar with us. Thanks, Monica, for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. And hi, all, and, and welcome. We've just realized today is the 13th, and I'm celebrating 13 years here at All Out. So that's a lot of 13s. And I'm not superstitious, but I'm crossing my fingers. And so if something goes back today, we can use that bad excuse that is <laughs> something related to that, that's an unlikely thing to happen. So um, what might be interesting for you to know uh, that happened during these 13 years? Well, I, I had the opportunity to, to learn about JDE security audit requirements from hundreds of, of companies, about 500. And the, these are public companies, private companies uh, of all sizes, from as big as Fortune 500 companies to um, even less than 100 users, so quite small. Also, uh, working alongside Steldix, learning from their security practice through these years. So we will be sharing, hopefully, useful insights together in this short webinar. And next, I'll be sharing with you in just a couple of minutes the All Out mission. Our objective is to deliver, as it, say, it says, simple security, streamlined processes, and auditable reporting. And through the software you will get, through the applications, you will get visibility on risky access, you will get best practices and out of the box data setups. So you can go faster. Um, you can also, when you maintain security, you can go gain speed. If you have multiple roles and getting headaches with access conflicts, you can uh, automate even and uh, resolve uh, easily and no more headaches. You can, through the software, you can get compliance by controlling changes and preventing segregation of duties or violations. You can 
uh, gain speed as well uh, when you have security and compliance projects. Uh, we are a market leading software. We've been in business since 2004 and we are Oracle certified, of course. We are now offering our, um, our own online uh, academy, uh, which allows you to uh, start building uh, on your JDE security and compliance skills and get, get certified if you want. And we are very proud of our uh, global partner network who can support you through your entire JD journey, no matter where you are. So how can we achieve our mission? This is uh, our next thing. We want to empower you. How? We want to empower you with cost-effective solutions to secure and protect your business by saving time, Along the way, we will see some um, tools today that can save you time, but including at the installation time, you will. Uh, but maximizing your investment in JDE by enhancing it with additional interfaces, applications, without changing JDE concepts. So that means that there's no need to retrain your security team. It's a small learning curve, and there's also no use for um, there's no requirement to use external parties for reporting. If you have them, great. You can use them, but there's not a requirement. And of course, we achieve this by having dedicated professionals with many, many years of JDE behind them. And just before I leave you with Agustina, again, I want to expand briefly on the all out knowledge resources available for you. And uh, the All Out Academy in special, uh, which um, you can benefit from because it adapts to your JDE slash all out knowledge level. It adapts to your time because you can learn and go at your own pace in your own time. And it adapts to your interest. There are three pathways right now. So you could see compliance, security admin, security implementation. Uh, if you fancy taking an assessment, you can also get certified on the knowledge you have acquired. And finally, if you're a fan of educational webinars, then you will find different topics every month. They are very rich in JD content. Uh, that's what we're sharing with the community. And um, we're trying to help you enjoy learning JDE. It can be boring at times, but we're trying to make it fun even today. <laughs> so back to Agustina. Thank you. So this is the agenda for today. We will speak about risk prevention, risk identification, repeatable process, and we have a bonus key which we prepared as a surprise today. So if you stay with us until the end, you will get to know this last key. We will talk about these four topics relating them to JD functionalities, our experience as consultant, and also why not as users. We will show demos of all our tools in each of the sections. Let's start with risk prevention, but first I will ask you if you know, what do castles and JD security have in common? You might wonder which is the relationship within, between JD and a castle. At first sight, it looks like they shouldn't have a lot of things in common, but you can trust me, security is really similar. We will reveal the mystery during the next minutes. During this webinar, we will discuss different points of JD security and how it looks like to a castle security. I would like you to keep in mind the following question. Can you be sure that nobody in your organization could use JD to commit fraud? How much time does it take you to accomplish auditor's requirements about access to applications or data? Could it be days or maybe weeks? I know that JD security is complex, so it can be difficult to get answers on risky access. After years of working in JD security, when I started working with All Out, I was able to start having more visibility in the common security practices. So let's start with this trip around the castle. Maybe some of you have done a tourist tour inside the castle, so I can ask you, which is the main access to it? We can say that's the drawbridge, right? So what happens if drawbridge is down? On my perspective, and maybe also for you, everybody will become a possible intruder. So the right question 
would be? When is the drawbridge down? So oh, let's see. First of all, the drawbridge is down when the company has an open security. What we recommend is having a closed security. That would be to deny all access and grant specific applications and actions to the right person, which is actually what auditors ask. As you might know, the default security setup for every security type is open, except in case that store public all is set up as closed, like you can see on the screenshot. I mean that not having any setup for start public makes the security to be open. So it's also important to have a regular housekeeping to avoid terminated employees to have access to our system. So you should take those access away once they are no longer working for the company. As we will see, there are easy ways to control this security setup. Also, it's important not to share user IDs it will always be better to have individual accounts. Um, I would also like to mention that we recommend to set up security at role level, not user level, but I will come back to this later. So, so yesterday you received a poll with some questions that we will review today. Thank you for taking some time to vote. And the first question was, is your ERP security closed? As you can see in the in my screen, there are some results uh, about, about the poll uh, and your votes. So the possible answers were completely closed, almost there, open, and I am not sure. So it looks, li it looks like that half of you are already working on it, but we still have a lot of work to do here. I know that it's not possible to change from open to close from one day to the next one, and that it's needed to do an integral analysis for doing that. With all our tools and with our experience, we are ready and glad to help you getting to know more about your JD security. So let's go to, um, to a time saver that I want to show you related to risk, risk prevention. And first to this question, do you have under control every granted access to the system, actions and applications? So, uh, Monica, could you please let us know more about this video? Yes, I will elaborate on this. So, housekeeping, uh, it's not easy in JDE. Uh, you have to, it would help if all the key tables were in the, in the same place. And obviously, if you don't have the visibility, you can make mistakes. So, the idea, yes, you can press play. Thank you, Agustina. So, the idea here is that in a single place, you can um, see your data. This would be your own data if you have the, the tools, your roles, the start public. So simple yes, no question on are roles assigned to users. So I, you can find any gaps and you can rationalize that data that you have. So any missing fine cut or menu filtering records, again, yes, no, you can see immediately so you can, this tool facilitates the job. If you go into the security and see if you have any security gaps, same thing. You've got all the different key security columns here. So these are my gaps within the action code security. We're doing the same with application. So it gives you an overview of whether records exist or not on key security tables. You can. Uh, go to the parameters, set them up yourself, select the boxes you need. All the security types, for example, are here in JDE, UDOs included, so you can see. If you want to the user, if you open the user tables, you can also uh, check the, the, um, the records that you've got. So in essence, uh, you can, you can uh, find data that is redundant, missing or inconsistent in an easy way. And you can clean up that noise to reduce, uh, you can reduce the noise before the auditors arrive and clean up. This application also contains some, some tools behind the form exit and row exit uh, that will help you, you clean. But you can see and you can, you can therefore clean it. It won't be fun probably, but hey, you're closer <laughs> to it. 
at least having visibility, not making mistakes when you're deleting or cleaning up. That's an important point. So back to you, Agustina. Okay, thank you. So now that we know how to prevent risk, uh, what about how to identify when risk are, uh, already exists? So let's start with our next topic, risk identification. If we continue with our tour inside the castle, we can say that in any regular castle, we will have inner walls and guards to control that there isn't any intrude going inside the restricted rooms. Walls will limit actions and guards will mitigate risk. As we all know, separation of duties is one of the main topics when being audited. The company must show the auditors that they have it under control. But what are we talking about when we say separation of duties? Every employee in the company is responsible for specific duties. What if these duties generate conflict between each other? What if these conflicts make the company vulnerable to fraud? So let's see an example. The following process exists, I would say, in every company. We have the vendor maintenance, the bank account setup, the supplier invoice entry, and the payment process. If a user has access to all of them, he could create a fictitious supplier, then a new bank account. He could also enter a voucher related to this new supplier and then process a payment, maybe to himself. So there are possible actions to avoid this. For example, to have this action separated and assigned to different roles, these roles can be related to different users. As we will see later, we recommend creating roles based on processes and not positions. Another way to avoid this is to create approval routines for any change in the vendor or in the bank accounts. Or you can also do random controls over payments or new supplier invoices. But with All Out, we can also use different separation of duties reports, which makes it easy to visualize any conflict. So let's go again to our poll. Do you have separation of duties conflicts? That was the question. Uh, with the possible options were no conflicts at all. Maybe I would like to know more. That's the main result that we had. We face separation of duties conflicts almost daily. You can see that there was a big percentage there also, and I am not sure. So I can see that with these results, some of you are facing a lot of separation of duties conflicts, and also there are some that would need more insights about how to solve these conflicts, and we can assist you using all our tools. So now I will show a demo of one of the all out tools that can work as a time saver at the moment of risk identification, especially with separation of duties conflicts and how to analyze them. So I will ask again, can you be sure that nobody in your organization could use Shady Edwards to commit fraud? First, before doing play, um, I would like to explain about the separation of duties rules. These are some predefined rules that specify which um, applications shouldn't be part of the same role or user. And if they are part of the same uh, user or role, um, it will, a separation of duty rule will be failing. So um, we can see here all the options that we have before submitting a report. It shows the, um, the rule range the, related to separation of duties rules and then the way that it's displayed uh, in our layout. So in just one uh, click, we can submit it and it will show the PDF and it's really easy to, to see it. Actually, it can be useful for the auditors with, because they can see all in this cover sheet and, and they have uh, how it was submitted. And then, oh, sorry. I started again. Just, hmm. just one second. And then we have the results where we can see the group that it was submitted. It's defined by a category code, in this case, finance. Then we have the users that are inside this group, in this case, Anna, the attached roles to this user, and then the rules that failed. So we have that in the same um, in the same user, there are some roles that 
fail, uh, fail having two programs that shouldn't be part of the same uh, role or user. And for example, bank accounts by address shouldn't be part of, uh, and uh, supplier master shouldn't be part of the same role. We have the roles on our rights, which are the application security type that are giving this um, access. And, and at the bottom, we have also, well, we have that it's always uh, activated with a yes on our right. And then we have at the bottom the um, um, as a, a start public that it's mentioned as a default, and it's also included in the analysis. So I think that you can see everything on just one look, um, and also it's good for the auditors to have it. So let's go to our next key, the third one. It's uh, to have repeatable process. Maybe some of you have seen Game of Thrones, or maybe you can remember that a duty patrol existed and that they used to go around the castle controlling that there weren't intrudes and that nobody was able to enter to the wrong room. Like this guy in the picture. He looks scary, <laughs> right? So um, we have some advices about how to make this duty patrol job easier. We will speak about repeatable process, which can be related to two different concepts. Repeatable process when creating new users and roles. Uh, our tips here are to create concise and smaller roles based on processes, to separate read-only roles from update or write roles. And also we can speak about repeatable process for controlling the security and procedures. In, in this um, concept, we can say two tips, centralizing documents repository or scheduling security reports. <coughs> And then, uh, regarding standardizing new roles, we would also like to recommend having different roles for each process. As those that you can see in the image, for example, supplier invoice entry, accounts payables inquiry, and vendor maintenance. Each of these roles will contain action security type that could, define, could be defined as read only or update, and, not, and also will contain application security. As a best practice, we also recommend having a separated role for data. That would be, for example, the last one, that it's business unit data. Uh, and in this case, it's uh, the security type is row. So let's go again to our poll. Um, our question was, do you feel confident about the role's definition? Uh, the options were, yes, it's easy to control their access. Not really, but we don't know how to improve them. I don't feel confident at all. I don't have the knowledge about roles. So a big percentage feels that it's easy to control role access, but there are a lot that might need assistance on analy analyzing, reviewing, and maybe restructuring these roles. So we would like to show you a little demo about a time server related to this topic. The question would be, how much time does it take you to accomplish auditor's requirements? So let's go to the video. Monica, can you help me with it? Yes. So uh, it's a time saver what we have here for you. Uh, we try to facilitate your duty patrol because if you establish a review uh, routine to review the strength of your lines of defense, let's say on a regular basis, that can reduce efforts towards the audit. So if you already don't have a repository, uh, we have one here. Yeah, you can go ahead. So. Everything is uh, in one place. Here is where you would find all the reports for segregation of duties and access, then everything labeled and you know where to go for to find um, those uh, reports on a repository. We have uh, a, just in this small section, 33 uh, default versions for different uh, to control uh, and review uh, different things, user access reviews, regulation of duties, a lot. There are a lot more in all the uh, different sections. So here uh, you can do your, you can define your quarterly user access review uh, annual. Uh, the good thing about this is that <clears throat> in the same way as 
with the JDE reports, you can schedule them. They have been designed to run with the, using the JDE scheduler, so they can run at a defined um, a period of time that you want uh, based on your, your organization, when they, they, the reviews need to be uh, need to be need to be performed. So uh, you would have visi visibility on where everything is. If you're remote, you can uh, all find stuff in the same place and uh, and review it. So um, at the end of the day, there are certain key areas that need to be monitored, and they don't vary uh, much uh, from one audit the, uh, to another audit. So you can this would help you um, have all your uh, to do your duty patrol and have your your routine well well established and if something does not quite work you can find out and protect yourselves from any any intruders or issues i hope this is a useful time saver yeah it looks great so now we can continue with the next key, right? That it's the bonus key. So, um, well, we will talk about data security. That's our bonus key. It's exciting, right? <laughs> so let's let's continue with the tour. Let's think about those big libraries in the castles. Imagine that some of the books have confidential information and that no, everybody in the castle should be able to read it or modify it. As you might know, for securing data, the role security type is used. This controls the access and updates of ranges of data. This is most commonly applied to companies and cost centers or business units. Role security is applied by securing fields. I'm not sure if you're all familiar with this, but with fields, I mean the data items. So what you need to do is secure a range of values in a given field. It can be applied to one table or all tables, as you can see in my screen. When role security is applied to start all tables, it affects all tables that use the data item. This type of uh, setup could cause performance issues because the, these data items could exist in multiple tables. So it's recommended to test the impact before rolling this out to end users. And then there are two different modes of row security that affects how JD fetches data. If, uh, on one side, we have exclusive row security. It's used to exclude records containing range of sensitive data, for example, excluding a range of cost center for its tables. So it will exclude the records or transactions that contain those cost centers and then inclusive row security which is used to include access to records containing ranges of data. For example, including a range of companies for a table only allows users to see the records that are part of those companies. By including access to a record or range of records, access to the rest of them is automatically excluded. And this is the one that we consider it as a best practice. So now, I will show you a video about a time saver related to this, to so data security. But first, I will ask you, are the company and business units data protected? So this is the, the menu from all out. We have, we have it under user access reports and we have the section of company and business units access reports. We have the report company and business unit access and the version list also we will use this time the report company and business unit access. So when I execute it, we can see that it's um, business unit security is uh, select and summarized by that item and that it's select to filter at, if at least view access. The display will be by that item and then users, that it's the sequence. Sequence. I submit it in just one second. I already have the, um, the submission and the, also the PDF. Let's see the results. 
So we have first the first page where we can see the details that will can be shown to the um, auditors with all, all with the details about how it was submitted. And then we will have the results that are based on the data item cost center, the user, the roles that are containing that user, and um, the security type, and from which value to which value is it, it's uh, allowed for this user to, to have access to. So in this case, it will be from NT to set, 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 set. So it looks like there are there is a lot of information and it's just one page. So let's continue. So, uh, we finished with the four keys that we had for today. But uh, we I would also like to tell you more about our experience with different customers. As you can see, we work with uh, all out in different customers. In one of our customers, they were requested from headquarters to, to introduce a um, SOX compliance security model in JD. At that moment, they had an open security model in JD. And in, in a pair of months, they went from an open security model with no control to a closed one with a monthly overview and deceleration of duties by the department with help of our experience as JD security consultants and also with the models of all out security. So maybe um, so maybe now you're asking, but what can Steltix do for us? So we have a list here of actions. We can do support during all out tools implementation. We offer workshops to review and align business and IT processes to ensure evidence for audit. We can perform risk assessment doing an impact analysis. Um, that will be to uh, the serration of duties conflicts identification, prevention and mitigation. This type of analysis can be a great investment to save time and money in the future. We can plan and execute security restructure following best practice and without segregation of duties conflicts. And also, um, yeah, Monica, could you please tell us more about All Out? So some takeaways here of uh, summarize a bit uh, what we've seen. Um, the All Out tools have been designed to help you reduce efforts. Uh, um, we have only seen a tiny bit. However, you can see that um, as you're already investing in JDE, uh, now what you will be doing with the all-out tools would be enhancing your standard JDE with additional, and I'm going to call them JDE applications. <clears throat> the all-out applications are like, well, the same as JDE applications because they have been uh, developed with the same code, the same develop, the same developing uh, protocols, everything. So. They integrate seamlessly, and in fact, to uh, access the All Out tools, you have to log into JDE. Therefore, that means that you've got interfaces into your own data. Uh, this makes the learning curve very small. The JDE concepts, as we uh, mentioned at the beginning, do not change. And these additional JDE applications, just to summarize uh, from what we've seen, help you to add the visibility so you can anticipate and identify risky areas by removing noise. We've seen by closing that, that main gate of the, of the bridge to put the, the drawbridge up. Also to help protect your business by, by preventing risk. We've seen separation of duties, mitigation controls, by creating repeatable auditable processes so you can you can perform your regular reviews which uh, it, it will result in your business uh, being safer and your audits shorter which is the point so if we go to the next one uh Agustina, please all out empowers you through a modular solution to adapt to your requirements this means that you can select the only the modules that uh, you want or need so you achieve your objectives 
In this case, to reduce the audit efforts, we I have selected three that, that are handy. I'm leaving the names there in case you wish to, to ask for more details on them. But the names are indicative of uh, what it might be involved. So we see risk reporting. So for uh, you can report on access and compliance, uh, segregation of duties, critical access, um, identify access. So risk management, after that, you can manage proactively that, that risk, add visibility, um, enforce audit trails if you want, enforce uh, change control with workflows. Uh, all this is available. And profile plus, uh, for uh, again, uh, it refers to that first tool we saw where you could see and rationalize that data and find if you had any gaps. Um, and it expedites the, the user provisioning, role provisioning. So all in all, I think with these ones you could uh, you could save time, go faster. And I think at this point that we are ready for questions. Have I think we yeah. have time. We my yeah. I maybe we went a bit fast. Minutes. Yeah, <laughs> we went fast. Um. So Andrea, can you tell us if there is any question around there? Hi, girls. Well, first of all, you did yeah. very well. Very nice presentation. Um. During the our promotion on this webinar, I actually got a couple of emails with questions. Um. And I will read them to you now. So one of them was, uh, how can I be sure that your segregation of duties reports will work for my business? Oh, OK, OK, I can answer that. OK, um, I, good question. So uh, if you already have segregation of duties requirements from audits, we can help and assist you on implementing those. But uh, in the case that you don't, we already have a starting point for you with a template that it's defined and we can help you tailor them according to the business requirements. Also, we can add new rules based on the custom application that maybe you have or we can create also new rules based on internal or external audit requirements. So, yeah, I think that's it. Um, do, do we have some, do we have another question on time for it? Yeah. So there was this other question. Um, someone asked, do I need to make any changes to the security data before using all out tools? Uh, okay. Um, could you check I get that? that one? Monica, yeah. Okay. So well, uh, do I need to make any changes to the security data before using all out tools? Uh, quick answer: No. Uh, there are no changes required at all. This is the beauty of it. The advantage is that um, uh, what you will get is additional interfaces on your tables and the data on, or inside your tables. Uh, it's important to know that all out is not a replacement for JDE. It's, it's more JDE and you can still use your uh, JD security programs alongside the all out program. So if the uh, secure JD security were um, if, sorry, if the security workbench in JDE is a favorite tool, keep on using it. It, it won't affect any any uh, of the all out programs. Um, we have alternatives to those that again help you with the speed, but um, Yes, it's not a replacement. You can, you don't need to do anything. It uh, sits there um, um, seamlessly, and you can see your data. You can maintain it. You can control it, and so you can be on top of it. And hopefully, as we said, saving you a lot, a ton of time uh, for your audits and to keep your business safe. Okay. That was a rather long answer, but I hope it was clear. <laughs> it was really good, really Thank clear. You. Thank you, Monica. We actually have a couple more questions. One is from Kumaraguro. Um, 
he's explaining they are currently rolling out our segregation of duties and gone live with a pilot site and roll it out to the other sites now. So congrats for that. And they have one key challenge. So it's more versions against each application was challenging to review. Is there any solution to review versions as well, rather just an application level? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you can get a visibility on the versions you have. You there's there's a lot of applications to give you visibility and control that for sure and reports. So that's the main thing. Uh, most people use versions, also custom applications. You can you can get all the visibility when you're doing your implementation. If I understood the question correctly. Right. There's another question from Rohit. Uh, he's asking how effective is all out security with uh, customized applications or versions and do they need to define them extensively? Um, well, in JDE, if you have versions uh, or custom applications, uh, you can um, you can still. Uh, what's the word? Um, you can define your segregation of duties uh, rules, let's say those forbidden combinations mm -hmm. um, yeah. with your versions and with your custom applications. The reports will read them and will show you if, uh, if there is going to be a conflict within those versions or custom applications. So all the functionality is designed around your existing JD data, as it is, as I was saying, there's nothing you need to change, there's nothing you need to configure especially. You only need to do some uh, uh, processing option configuration, depending on the program you're using in all out and go. And that's something that Stelix can help you with implementing. But again, I just want to make sure that uh, you can work with your versions, your custom applications, and get the visibility you need for implementations or, or to review what you have to redesign. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Monica. And then we, I think we have time for one last question. Um, is all out set up version specific for JD Edwards, or they that they have to repeat the entire custom application setup uh, when migrating from 9.1 to 9.2? Um, can you repeat again? Because I think there were a couple of questions in one. Yeah. So there is the last question: Is all out set up version specific for JD Edwards, or do they have to repeat the entire custom application setup all over migrating? No. 9.1. Nothing, nothing. Uh, the all out um, software is compatible compatible with all the JD versions. So and you don't have to change anything again. So uh, the only thing you might need to do if you are on 9.0 in JD, for example, uh, sorry, in 9.2, and uh, and you're using a, an, an outdated all out version, for example, if there's somebody using already all out, what we say is that, okay, as JD changes uh, from 9.0, 9.1, 9.2, we're also reviewing the software, always ensuring that everything's perfectly compatible, that those changes don't impact on the all out applications. And uh, we suggest, obviously, that you're always on the latest version. But um, if you have custom applications in 9.0 and you want, and we are on, basically, it's completely um, uh, compatible with every JV version, no matter what you use. So you don't have to worry about your custom applications in 9.0 not working then with all out in in a version that that will not happen. Thank you. Uh, I don't know if that was cl clear enough enough. If not, please, the person who posted this question asked me again in yeah. a different way. So to make sure it's it's yeah, the answer is clear. Please yeah. write us if you have any more questions. Yeah. Uh, since we're now getting to an end, uh, we will answer all the rest of the questions separately, but you will get your answer. Yeah, thank you, Andrea. I was going to say that. Yeah. 
Great. And thank you for checking the questions. So um, we would love to see you again, but most important, we would love you to know more about us. If you want to know more about Deltix or All Out products, please visit our website. And if you are interested in seeing again this webinar, it has been recorded and um, we will share with you the link. So thanks again uh, and thanks Monica for uh, joining us today. It was great uh, to have you here. Have you here? Um, thank you. Thank you, my pleasure. And thank you for those who stayed until the end. That's that deserves a round of applause. <laughs>